There is no doubt that the game balance is a very important aspect when it comes to modern multiplayer games, since the user experience is directly tied to how well the game is balanced. But there are already several good videos out there that talk about game balance in relation to multiplayer games, explaining the reason why it's so important and why in most cases having an imbalance is actually better than having balance when it comes to those games. So today I will talk about game balance. However, not in the context of multiplayer games, but rather in the context of single player games. Let's start with this essential question. How important is the game balance when it comes to single player experience? Many people think that if the game doesn't have a multiplayer element to it, balancing is somehow irrelevant. And to be frank, it kinda is a lot less important, since ultimately in single player games the user can usually tailor his or her own experience with the use of self-imposed limitations. These limitations usually lead to some very interesting challenges, such as no level up runs like people tend to do in Dark Souls, or one weapon challenges when you are limiting yourself to only a certain weapon type, or even some extreme challenges such as no death or no damage sustained runs. Not only these challenges are very fun to attempt, they also provide you some bragging rights if you are successful at this. But if we can simply limit ourselves while playing the game, then why would the game balance be of any importance, especially when self-imposed challenges can be so fun? To answer this question we have to take into the account the fact that there are many different types of players when it comes to video games. To make this video a bit more accessible, I will divide gamers into three categories. Power gamers, skill based players and casuals. Casuals are going to be the majority of the player base when it comes to pretty much any given game. This group of players prefer to enjoy video games without going too much into the actual greedy details, so people within this group usually put a far greater emphasis on visual and audio stimulation than they do on actual game mechanics. Basically, as long as the action looks flashy and sound effects are on point, casuals will not really give much of a thought about anything else. Power gamers basically want to optimize anything and everything when the game lets them to do so. So effectively power gamers tend to make the game easier for them by min-maxing every possible aspect. For power gamers, optimization is key. They are not so interested in how the moves look, feel, sound, but instead they care mostly about actual properties of moves, items and whatever else they got at their disposal. So the concepts like power leveling and farming for better items before progressing through the game are very common among power gamers. When it comes to skill based players, they are the ones who tend to enjoy self limiting challenges the most, since they primarily like to master the gameplay mechanics of the game. They tend to be into a completely different kind of optimization than power gamers. Of course these two groups are not mutually exclusive and there are many power gamers who enjoy challenging themselves and vice versa, with skill based players often enjoying getting the most out of their characters, so there is definitely some overlap between these two groups. So, it is kind of reasonable to assume that every developer wants their game to appeal to all three of those groups, and I feel like no modern video game does it as good as Neo. For those of you who don't know what Neo is, go and get it. I have a huge playlist with guides and tutorials that will explain some of the mechanics and help you to get started. It's an amazing video game. But yes, Neo. As a game, it is somewhat challenging for the casual players and can set seemingly massive roadblocks for them, but it keeps them reeled in well enough for them to eventually overcome these, which in turn gives them an incredible feeling of satisfaction. It also provides a variety of ways in which you can customize your character. And the icing on the cake is that because it has such a versatile customization and yet very sophisticated combat system, the game is perfect platform for a variety of challenge runs. So alright, sticking with Neo as an example, what role does the balancing play in achieving all this perfection? Well, for starters, the strength of the player character is affected greatly by what sets of equipment they have equipped and also by their level. This means that the difficulty of the game is easily adjustable by the player by simply leveling up or finding better loot. Accessibility of stronger equipment is a great way in which developers often balance their games, with better equipment being less accessible or more expensive, with better moves and skills being harder to unlock. Balancing for single player games as such is done in several ways, depending on both the genre and 
and how strong or weak the aspects that need balancing are. The two main ways to go about it is to either change the properties of equipment, attack, whatever it is that needs balancing, alter its frame data, the attributes of it, the damage it does. This method of balancing is very popular in fighting games and in action RPGs such as Dark Souls and Neo. The other way to balance the game is to adjust the accessibility, make some things easier or harder to unlock. It can be achieved by raising the price, raising the level you unlock it at, and so on. Many other games prefer this method of balancing since it doesn't tinker as much with the actual gameplay interactions. But now, taking all of this information into account, Account. What reasons are there for balanced patches in single player game? This argument pops up very frequently, especially in Dark Souls and new community discussions, that balancing the game's PvP shouldn't ruin the PvE experience. And while there's definitely some truth to it, with PvP being more of an added bonus rather than main focus of these games, people seem to not realize that those balance changes aren't necessarily for the game's PvP to be more balanced, although admittedly they often are, but rather because the developers didn't actually intend for those things which they are balancing to be as such. One very recent and great example, sticking with Neo, are critical health living weapon builds being nerfed. The nerf had little to do with PvP balancing and was put into effect because developers saw that players are using a particular setup to basically break the game and play it in a way that they did not intend the players to do. This is the primary reason for balancing single player games, since if the game is played by players in ways that developers did not intend them to, basically means that they have failed to deliver their vision of the final product. This begs a very important question. If the casual players are going to be the vast majority of any given player base, and power gamers who can break the game systematically, or skill-based players who can break it mechanically, are just a minority, shouldn't the aim of game developers be to simply please the casual gamers and leave the other two categories to their own devices and let them do whatever the broken stuff they want well, even though they are indeed in minority compared to casual gamers? They're actually the group of players that matters the most in this aspect, since they're very likely to continue supporting the developer once the hype has settled down. Even though they're fewer in numbers, they tend to have a stronger opinion about those games and they also voice their opinion much more openly. At the end of the day, a satisfied customer will bring more satisfied customers with themselves, and more players enjoying the game is a win-win situation for both players and developers. Let me know what you think about balancing single-player games and how it affects your multiplayer experience. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.